Hi, everybody. Uh, we're going to start up the review of the 2021 Spring MCAS. It's been a while. <clears throat> so this is this is a uh, review of the problems that were taken last May in 2021 uh, as part of the uh, DESE's rendition of the MCAS that year. So we're going to go through this problem by problem through detail, as well as in a detailed way as possible, while also making references to the online platform that you'll be taking it on. So I'm, I'm doing it on paper, but you, you would be taking this online. And I'll try to make as many uh, observations as possible that will help you navigate the test uh, if you're studying to prepare for, well, if you're studying for it this coming May in 2022. So let's get started. So number one, on a coordinate plane, <clears throat> triangle NPQ is dilated by a scale factor of two <clears throat> with respect to the origin. To create its image, n prime, p prime, and q prime, which of the following shows possible locations of n p q and n prime, p prime, and q prime? Okay, so if we look at all these, first of all, we know we're dilating here, and the pre-image is going to be n p q, and the image is going to be n prime, p prime, and q prime. Okay, so dilations we know result in non-congruent images so long as it's a scale factor other than one. We know the scale factor is two, which means we're doubling the size. And it's with respect to the origin. So that means if it's respect to the origin, we would just multiply the original coordinates. Let me zoom in a little closer here. We would multiply the original coordinates of the pre-image by 2 in order to get the coordinates of the, um, the image. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at this. Um, <clears throat> see if there's anything we can eliminate. Well, if you look at all these, the pre-image is smaller than all of the images. So there's no, that's not easy for us to eliminate then. We're looking for one that's going to be twice, the distance of the the, uh, the coordinates of the image should be twice as far from the origin as the pre-image. So let's go ahead and look at some of these coordinates. Uh, we'll start with this one. So n is negative 2, 1. And then n, actually I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I'm writing. There you go. And then n prime, we're talking about this problem right here. n prime would be negative 4, positive 3. Okay, so again, if we're dilating by scale factor of 2 with respect to the origin. We're multiplying these numbers by 2 to get this. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. That works, but 1 times 2 is not 3. Okay, so this is out. And that's just a quick way you can check these. Let's try this one over here. So n is going to be, uh, let's see, negative 2 and positive 1. <clears throat> and n prime is going to be negative 3, and one the y value doesn't even change. So clearly that doesn't work either. Okay, let's try this one. So n is going to be negative 2, 1, and n prime is going to be negative 4, 1. <clears throat> so you'll notice that these two, the y values didn't even change. So clearly that's out. That leaves us with this one. Let's just double check that. So right over here. So n is going to be negative 2, 1. And n prime is going to be negative 4, 2. Yep, if you multiply these by 2, you're going to get that. So <clears throat> that's it for number 1. So really the easiest way to do this, I think, is to pick a coordinate, pick a point, and make sure it works. Uh, if it does work and you have more than one where they work, make sure you check the others because it would be it is possible where one of the points would match up with the other, but... Um, one of them would be off eventually. There's only three points to check. So I think that's the quickest way to solve that problem. Okay, number two. <clears throat> number two. Sylvia is planning to use a four-year loan to purchase a car. <clears throat> the price of a car is $8,575. The amount of interest she'll have to pay is $1,036. She will combine the price of the car and the amount of interest to determine how much she must repay. She will make 48 equal monthly payments. Okay. So <clears throat> she's combining these together, all right, and she wants to pay it off in 48 months, okay, that are equal. Which of the following best estimate, which of the following is the best estimate of each monthly payment Sylvia will make? Okay, so key, key terms here is uh, estimate. So we are going to round here. These are not going to be exact, okay? Let's think what we're, we're doing here. So <clears throat> we're adding these two values together to find out the total amount of money that Sylvia owes, and then we're going to 
uh, find out how, my, how we would pay that back in 48 equal payments. So let's add these together first. And I'm actually not going to round this yet. And I'll show you why in a second. So 1,036. And add that together. So 11, carry the 1, 11, carry the 1. So we get 9,611. Okay. That's fine. And that's going to be our amount. And now this 48 monthly payments. So, okay. We're going to go with 96. So let's just round that to 9,600, I guess. We're going to round up down to 9,600. Because we can, because we're estimating. That's not a big difference in the grand scheme of things. Divide that by 48. And let's see here. So 48 times 2, I believe, is 96, which it is. Okay. So it would be 200. So basically for $200 a month, for 48 months, we'd be able to pay this off. Now, you got to be careful with these when, when this is estimate, because I think some folks want to round this to 50. And they may want to round this too early, maybe round this to 9,500. I just, I'd be, I'd be very cautious. You want to round as little as possible, especially when these potential answers are fairly close to one another. So you can't round too much. If you do, you're going to get the wrong answer. Um, you know, it's just, it's something I think you got to be very, very careful of. So B would be our answer there. Let's just, let's just see what would happen if you did. So let's say we, you rounded this to, oh, I don't know, you rounded this to. 9,500, I guess. And then you rounded this to 50. Right? You're going to get, let's see, can you zoom in here? Let's zoom in here. Get one. And then you're going to get 45. And then you're going to get nine. I mean, I guess it's close to 200 to still work, but yeah, you want to round as little as possible. Okay. That's number two. We have time for one more, I think. Before I gotta go. Okay, number three. Consider this equation. Which of the following values of x makes the equation true? Select two values. Okay, so there's a few different ways to solve this. It says there's two potential answers. Now, you can get all the x's on one side and then factor it, or you can just plug these numbers in. So it all depends on how comfortable you are. I'm gonna show you the plug-in method and I think most of us are going to plug in unless we're very comfortable with factoring. And if you're really comfortable with factoring, chances are you're not going to have any trouble on this test at all. Because if you're at a level where you're factoring with accuracy, then yeah, you should have no issues passing this test. But if you're not comfortable with factoring, that's okay. Most of us are not, especially because a lot of algebra classes didn't get through factoring to a point where kids feel comfortable with it last year because of the pandemic. Uh, I think plug-in is just a better option. Let's do the plug-in method first. And I should have time to finish both before the bell rings. So let's go ahead and pick one. So negative 2. So plug that in. So we're going to have 5 times negative 2 minus 1 equals uh, negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 plus 1. And we just see if this is a true statement or not. So this comes down to order of operations here. So 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I'm doing stuff out of order, but it's not going to affect the problem here. Negative 2 squared is 4. And then plus 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Negative 10 minus 1 is negative 11. 4 plus, actually, 4 minus 4, because 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And leave this over here, negative 11 equals, and then 4 minus 4 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So negative 11 equals 1, which is obviously not true. So this is out. Okay? We're going to do this for all of them, so let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to plug in negative 1, so we have 5 times negative 1 minus 1 equals negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5 minus 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to do this at the same time just to save space. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So negative 6 equals 0. That's obviously not true. This is out. <clears throat> Let's go over here. We're going to plug in 0. We'll go up here so we have more room. So 5 times 0 minus 1 equals 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 1. So 5 times 0 is 0. <clears throat> 0 squared is 0. Uh, 2 times 0 is 0. So we have negative 1 equals positive 1. That's out. So hopefully it's the last two. 
we'll plug in 1. So 5 times 1 minus 1 equals 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 1. 5 times 1 is 5 minus 1. And then 1 squared is 1 plus 2 times 1 is 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 1. 4 equals 4. So that works. Okay, last one is 2. So 5 times 2 minus 1 equals 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 1. 5 times 2 is 10 minus 1. 2, two squared is 4. Plus 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1. No, 10 minus 1 is 9. And 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So 9 equals 9. So that works. So we have the 2 we need. Okay. I'll show you the I'll show you the factory method because I think we uh, am I going to run out of time? No, I think I can do it real quick. All right, so let's do this. So that's the that's the method I'd recommend everybody use. Um, I need some scrap paper to do this. Oh, by the way, you'll notice I'm writing a lot, and you can't write when it's on your screen. Although a lot of students here at Milford will be given um, any student wants will be given a marker, like a dry erase marker, mark on the screen. Use your scrap paper. This is where you'd want to write all this. And like I said, this takes time this problem when you solve it this way, but it is a very effective method to find the answer. But let's do factoring in case for the folks that want to see that. So 5x minus 1 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. And again, if you did it this way, you don't have to do it the way I'm about to show you, but some folks might want to see it. So we want to get all the x's. We want to get everything on one side and 0 on the other. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 5x from both sides. So that's going to give us <clears throat> negative 1 equals x squared 2x minus 5x is negative 3x. That plus 1. Then we're going to subtract. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. <clears throat> so we're going to have x squared minus 3x plus 2. And I'm going to put the 0 over here. It doesn't really matter. OK, so we have this. Now we're going to factor it. So we're going to change it to a binomial. Sorry, two binomials. And we put x and x here. Factors of 2 are 2 and 1, either positive or negative. This is negative, which means these are both going to be negative. So x minus 2, x minus 1. Uh, which of these solutions equals 0? So if I had a positive 2 here, or a positive 1, it equals 0. So it's 2 or 1. So if you can do factoring, I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining factoring. If you know how to do it, you know what I just did. Uh, but that could be a whole other conversation that lasts a while. Uh, that's a much faster way to do it. But if you don't feel comfortable factoring, don't try this. Just stick to plug-in, and that'll be enough to get it correct. Okay. So that's all the time we're going to have. i got to get to directed study, so hopefully that was helpful, and uh, we'll continue soon and have the rest of the problems done. Thanks for watching, guys.